Baldur's Gate 3 is taking the internet by storm. At its peak, a whopping 800,000 plus concurrent players were playing this weekend, catapulting it to the number eight most played of all time spot. Jesus. The gaming community has sung its praises and it's incredibly refreshing to play a feature complete game of this caliber. Isn't it so weird to hear that word? Like every time that I hear feature complete, it's like unlocking a core memory that is from like 2001 on day one but AAA game developers yeah. want you to know it's like a that this like is a forgotten time rockstar level nonsense for scope that it's foolhardy to set expectations higher and Baldur's Gate 3 should not be used as a raised standard to RPGs going forward mm -hmm. why was the first response to defend the current state of AAA gaming as opposed to saying because they're working in AAA gaming and they are making the shit games that people don't like so whenever somebody makes a shit game, or sorry, makes a game that people do like, they get defensive because whenever you compare it to their game, their game looks bad. That's why. It's pretty simple, really. Hey, maybe we can learn a thing or two from Baldur's Gate 3 and make our game better for our customers. That's this not the goal. It's not the goal is to make the game better for the customers, to make the game better for the shareholder. Now, sometimes those goals align for sure. But let's not forget that there's a one and a two. And gamers are the two. It's all kicked off way back on July 8th, a lifetime ago by internet standards, yeah. I know, when a writer and BAFTA nominee, Xavier Nelson, took to Twitter to express- By the way, this guy, I feel like a lot of what he said wasn't entirely wrong. And it was mainly a criticism of the way that AAA gaming is not willing to take risks on things. Like, I actually think that almost everything this dude said, like, I went through every tweet, every video he did. He was right. It's just that it was expressed in a way, especially whenever it's expressed without context, and, and given the context of, like, everything else he said, people can, can pick out that line and be like, ah, you know, like, what the fuck? I actually agree with some stuff he said. Yeah, he, he, was, he was right with a lot of stuff concerns about Baldur's Gate 3, namely that fans would use Baldur's Gate 3 to apply criticism or a raised standard to RPGs going forward. My rebuttal is, why shouldn't customers have raised standards? Taking it a step Well, because if they have raised standards, then it will become more difficult for you to give them video games that are bad, that take less effort and cost more money. So like, for example, like, let's say McDonald's, let's say Burger King. I don't really like McDonald's hamburgers that much. I love Burger King. I think Burger King's amazing. People sleep on Burger King all the time. They're wrong. Anyway, let's say Burger King says, you know what, guys? We've had it. We, we've had enough with these single uh, hamburgers. From now on, we are only selling double hamburgers at the price of single hamburgers. Only doubles for the same amount of money from now on. You know who's going to be mad about that? Doctors. And also, Wendy's. And uh, Whataburger. And uh, Culver's. Steak and Shake. McDonald's. All of the other burger places are going to be mad. Because now, they have increased the standard. And everybody else has to either meet that standard or not. And that's why it's bad for them. 3,000 years ago, I went to business school. I have a business degree. I'll never forget whenever we had our marketing professor tell us that a price war isn't good for anybody. And that's the way they think. Further, why shouldn't some AAA developers raise their own standards? Are we really going to pretend that consumers shouldn't be a little upset right now and hoping for an improvement in the industry going forward? Rockstar just announced a $50 remake, I'm sorry, conversion of the original Red Dead Redemption yeah. for the PlayStation 4 and Switch that has no mention of a 4K update, no mention of 60 FPS, and no mention of multiplayer support. The game came out 13 years ago and the Xbox port does everything they're offering and then some for free with your 360 copy. Go buy a brand new copy of the Game of the Year edition on Amazon right now for $30 and you're good to go.
Star Wars Jedi Survivor, when released on PC, had furious fans citing numerous problems getting the game to run, frequent crashes, and similar problems on the PlayStation 5 and Xbox. EA apologized and is still working to fix the issues. Dest uh, that, actually not true. Uh, they did fix the issues and the problems with Jedi Survivor were solved. It's okay now. I played through almost all of it. And so, yeah, they did actually improve it. Uh, however, yes, it was very bad on release and it was not acceptable. They did? Yeah, they did. Destiny 2 just released a state of the game blog saying, amongst other things, that they don't have the resources to release new ritual armor every season. But that same studio manages to create new armor sets in the shop for up to $20 a pop with... Well, yeah, because that's on the store and they make money from the store and they don't make money from people playing the game. What the hell do you expect? Without fail every season. Diablo 4 unabashedly has several character skins priced at $20 each and just released their first season that had a patch that was so poorly thought out that the developers had to have an emergency live stream to apologize. And they also had to have an emergency live stream to apologize for the first emergency live stream that wasn't received well which is still better than Lost Ark, who is now going on, I'm pretty sure, an Apology World Tour. I've since begun working to revert those changes. Yes. We don't plan on doing a patch like this ever again. Okay, you need a more comparable Until RPG example two. of why fans are heralding Baldur's Gate 3 as a breath of fresh air. Look no further than Mass Effect Andromeda, which was widely panned. Sorry, my face is tired from dealing with everything or cyberpunk 2077 that made promises about last gen game consoles that it couldn't keep it took cdpr almost a year to get that all sorted out well that looks like that looks like shit that looks like fucking garbage wow yeah no wonder people were mad i'll make this as clear as possible to contextualize how fans are feeling it feels like money has become more important than the core experience for fans. That's why it feels like, yeah, you could say it feels that way. As a matter of fact, I think it does. Yes. Yes, I, I concur. I believe this. this is very true. Elden Ring. Baldur's Gate 3, and even The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom are being True. widely celebrated. So what is up with the excuses? A game came along that is amazing, is selling well, is being praised by developers and fans alike, and the response is, well, we can't do that. Well, sweet, if that doesn't get me hyped for Mass Effect 4, I don't know <laughs> what will. Xavier's tweet was well-intentioned, and he went on to add a lot of he ha He made a lot of very good points. Like, there's nothing wrong with what he said. In context, but I think it misses the perspective of the consumer. But we yeah, it does. And this is the thing, is developers need to stop. Like today, for example, I said I was going to play Final Fantasy 16. I had some serious shit come up, and I didn't even go live until past 2 in the morning. But that's not your problem. And so I said, sorry, it's too bad. I'll try to do it tomorrow and do better. Like, nobody gives a fuck. About, oh, oh, it's so hard. Get the, shut the fuck up, pussy. Stop crying. You either do it or you don't. And it's like, if you're not going to do it, that's fine. But stop fucking going and looking for somebody to pat you on the back for not doing it. Holy fuck. Just like, nobody cares about, oh, it's so hard. Oh, well, this is, bro, you're talking to people that work in construction and you're going to say that it's hard. Your job could be more demanding than that. I don't know. But guess what? To them, it's not. I don't know anything about game design or how hard it is. We don't give a fuck. We want a game. I don't know anything about how to build a car, but if I get that bitch with three wheels and they want me to pay for the fourth one as DLC, I'm going to be pissed. We just know that Destiny is deleting hundreds of dollars worth of expansions when they feel like it, that Diablo is constantly reminding us to buy skins in their store, and most PC ports have been abysmal lately. Yeah, they have. Been. Remember, that tweet was made nearly a month before Baldur's Gate 3 blew up, and it was still contentious with fans. Spe Keep in mind, uh, Remnant 2 was not a problem on PC. It was some graphics were, you know, problematic, but, you know, it was like high, high definition, but overall it was pretty good.
speaking up about their frustrations and developers chiming in to say what Baldur's felt Gate like two. game development Baldur's is hard, you don't well. get it, be quiet. Baldur's Gate 3 is a game from a large passionate yeah. studio that refuses to add microtransactions, gave players early access so they could address any problems that arose before launch, and is yeah. taking Steam charts by storm. So why should fans not use that as a gold standard of how to do it right? It is. And why would a AAA studio not look at it and say, hey, maybe cramming microtransactions into our game isn't a good look? Because most of the people that develop games are talentless losers that can't make a good game and don't know what the fuck they're doing. That's the real reason. That's actually the reason. It's the same thing as movies. It's just a joke. They have no fucking idea what they're doing. They make trash games with trash mechanics and people don't like them. It's the same with most jobs. Yeah, it is. Most people are shitty at their job. I would say. When Mass Effect 4 comes out, I don't want to see a $20 Liara skin. And I hope that his performance is tested. Well, if you don't want to see it, then you don't fucking buy the game. That's the thing It is like, if you, if you purchase the games, if you play the games, they're going to keep making them. That's why FIFA comes out every year with a new Ultimate Team. For you to buy the same fucking card you did last time. And the thing is, like, I am sick. Like, I'll talk about this and complain about it all fucking day. But let's be honest. It's not going to go anywhere. Nothing's going to matter. It's not going to change. So, yeah it across all platforms before release. Am I in the wrong people, for not yeah, wanting yeah, yeah. microtransactions and a stable video game at launch? It's not that you're in the wrong, it's that you're in the minority. You're right, but most people are fucking dumb and they'll buy them anyway and they'll buy into the game and they won't care. That's just the way it goes because gamers, every gaming boycott is only one three minute cinematic away from being over. We already saw that with Diablo 4, and I guarantee fucking to you whenever Diablo 5 comes out, everybody's going to be saying the same goddamn thing. Credit where credit's due now. There have been some really good examples of AAA games like the Dead Space remake and the Resident Evil 4 remake come to mind, People like both of which have been massive successes for EA and Capcom. Vampire Survivors came along yeah. and took the internet by storm last year. Do I need to bring up Elden Ring again? But that tweet blew up in the development sphere, and frankly, the pushback is just ridiculous. Developers well, should- People are sick of getting excuses of why their games suck dick. I don't want to hear about, oh, it's hard to make the game work on PC. Oh, well, if it's so fucking hard, maybe you shouldn't have charged me $70 for it. Why don't you charge me 40, and then maybe I'll pay you the extra 30 whenever you decide to figure out what the fuck you're doing. Oh, but it's so hard. Oh, but it's so hard. Oh, get the fuck. Nobody cares. Nobody gives a fuck. It's the same as like as a, I tell you guys as streamers. Oh, people make a mean comment. They said, oh, they said I was fat. They said, oh my God. Oh my God. I'm going to make a tweet about it. It's like nobody wants to see this shit. Nobody gives a fuck about how you feel. Dance, monkey, dance. What are you doing? And we're all monkeys. If I go to your store, and you're not, not you, but you, but the royal you, and, and, and you're not, you're like, oh, well, uh, you know, I'm on my phone because, uh, you know, my car's in the shop. It's like, I can understand it a bit, but like, if this takes more than five seconds, I'm going to be upset because I came here to get a fucking hamburger and you're on your goddamn phone. Nobody gives a fuck about your personal problems. Everybody is understanding to an extent, but to the extent that you are receiving a subpar product, that kindness is very limited. Looking at what Baldur's Gate 3 did and trying to replicate where they can, not jumping up to defend games that are cramming in practices that fans are getting fed up with. Yeah. And make no mistake about it, these decisions impact game design. Many games are utilizing battle passes Ooh. and player engagement as a metric of success. For That's right, that's what matters. It's not about who's having fun, it's about who's playing the game. Player, that means more grindy missions. That means more reminders to stop in the shop. It means a boring grind because keeping players engaged is a key 
metric. Many of the people who came out to talk about why Baldur's Gate 3 shouldn't be the new standard have since walked back those statements, and I'm glad. Because if the industry can't take a good, hard look at what's going wrong, why fans... I think the problem is that you do have a lot of, like, it, it, it's a two-prong issue. Is that I do think the developers and designers for a lot of games are talentless hacks. They have no fucking idea how to run their game. And they probably would just be better off if they just let all decisions be made by a, uh, a, a poll by the player base because they have no actual insight into game development. You listen to somebody like Kevin Jordan, one of the original designers for Classic WoW, talk about game design. This is a fucking artist. You listen to one of these new guys explain why they need to have a fucking microtransaction in a single player game. This is a fucking con artist. All right. That's the difference. And the other thing, I forgot what it was. What was I going to say? Because if the industry can't take a good, hard look at what's going wrong... Oh, why right. That's right. And so the other thing is that there is an element of truth to that. Is that a lot of times the good developers are getting handicapped by the executives, by upper level management, by people that are basically a living proof of the Peter principle. If anybody doesn't understand that, that's the idea that you get promoted up and up and up and up to a point of incompetence. And guess what? You don't get promoted anymore because you're bad at your current job. And so you have a corporation full of those people and the other people that are being hired in, this person just used to work at Volvo. Now they're coming to work at Activision. Well, guess what? They don't know shit about video games. They've worked in the car industry for 30 years. So yeah, they've got no idea. Like the video game they play, the last video game they played was Tetris back in the 80s and they had to quit, you know, because, you know, real life took took over. They had to go to college at that point. And so, uh, you know, this person has no fucking idea what's going on and they're making decisions for you. They're setting timetables that are unrealistic. It's just crazy. So, yes, uh, there is there is an element of this where like you have developers that I think do want to do something good and it just turns out to be bad. But I'm going to be honest. I think there's also a lot of bad developers and bad designers. I think there's a lot of really bad ones. And I don't think we should make any fucking excuses. There's no designer, no developer, or sorry, no executive. Bobby Kodak wasn't sitting behind the designer for Uber Lilith saying, make the color of the fireballs the same color as the floor. <laughs> No, he wasn't doing that. Yeah, it was just a fucking idiot that had no idea how to do their job. That's it. Fans reacted the way they did to Elden Ring and Baldur's Gate 3. Yeah. And then make impactful changes? We're screwed. Also, people seem to be using the fact that Larian is a big studio against them. The fact yeah. that they had a long development cycle against them? Really? Blizzard is also a huge studio with over 8,500 employees mm -hmm. across several offices. They credited every employee at Blizzard in the release of Diablo 4. Bungie is a huge studio with over 1,552 employees yep. across several offices. BioWare is a huge studio with over 500 employees across several... Yeah, but for them it's different. Why is it different? Because it is. There it is offices Actually, and reality is a bit different the industry is made with people of hearts of love and games that work at blizzard and make them hate their job that's why games become shitty no i don't believe that i think that just with everybody else every other job there's people that are bad at their fucking job i think it's actually just that simple i think that you're right in a lot of cases that there are people who have had their soul crushed and and now they don't try as hard you're definitely right about that too it's not that you're i, I think that we're both right I think you're right, and I also think I'm right. Arian is also a large studio with over 400 employees across several offices. All of them have established beloved IPs with a ton of lore to pull from. All of them have a lot of money to make video games, and all of them had a long time to make anything they wanted to make. To say Baldur's yeah. Gate 3 is successful because it's aligned with Dungeons and Dragons is insanity. You think 800,000 Steam players are playing a game called Baldur's Gate 3 because of Dungeons and Dragons? No. 
it's clearly gone far beyond that audience. Obviously. I don't know anything about Dungeons and Dragons. I didn't know this game had anything to do with Dungeons and Dragons. And you know why I'm playing it? Because I like good games with a heavy focus on storytelling and bears. But anyway, honestly, I good one. Uh, like that's one of the reasons why i like wasn't really that interested in this game like if i if i play this game right which i am strongly considering we will obviously have the dream team of probably me mcconnell grayson maybe riku maybe bean maybe yes fanned right like that probably would be the group of of individuals It wasn't all doom and gloom from the development side. Thank you, Juno Blees, formerly a riot, for jumping in and echoing yeah, exactly yeah, what I'm saying late, here. Man. Her quote True. tweet reads, I can't disagree with this one more. Whenever a game disrupts the industry and delights players beyond expectations, it absolutely raises industry and genre standards regardless of why and how. We should look at the Larian success story and ask ourselves, how are we going to make our games this better? This is what happened with FPS games, bro. Halo came in there fucking walked up to the table put their dick on the table and they said listen bitch this is how it's gonna be and it took activision a long fucking time but you know what they finally came back and they made modern warfare 2 and that's what happens is that whenever you have great games you have more great games and create the next games that shake up the industry. Players should and must always expect more from us, never less. Thank you. I implore AAA devs to look at these games that are being celebrated and look at your pipeline to see why the consumer yeah. is getting frustrated about the experience I outline in this video. Mm -hmm. And obviously try and make an improvement because telling me how hard it is when you're breaking profit and revenue records isn't a super compelling argument from the customer's perspective. That's the thing is it's about the customer's perspective and this is what matters, right? This is why I said about streamers. Like, I never complain about, oh, streaming is so hard. Shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up. Go to a therapist. Nobody wants to hear it. Stop it. Fucking stop. Nobody cares. Stop it. Is Baldur's Gate 3 an outlier? Yes, yeah, but I for one wish it could become the standard and being told to shut up because I don't know game design doesn't feel super constructive, but hey, I'm just- Well, it doesn't matter you know game design or not. Like, again, do you have to know game design to think that uh, loading everybody's stash whenever you go into town is a bad idea? You have to be a, you have to go to school for four years to think mm, maybe that's a little bit unnecessary. Some idiot on the internet who doesn't know anything about game design. I guess I'll just go buy my horse armor and call it a day. Yeah. Enjoy your $20 on top of your $100 for the collector's edition on top of your $15 for the battle pass. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below because I get why you're frustrated and it's really frustrating to see people not saying, hey, Maybe we could learn a thing or two from Larian. I'm enduring Baldur's Gate 3, and I hope game development continues to grow from where it is today. I hope you do too. Let me know what you think in the comments below. And for more on all things gaming, keep it right here on IGN. There it is. I think this was a really good video. What the fuck? Like, this was, like, I, I hardly ever see, like, rare, rare IGNW. I feel like IGN usually has pretty good videos. I do. I, I, I mean, IGN makes more videos a day than I do. Like, yeah, they're going to have some L's, but I think it, it I, I really, I, I think that usually they have good videos. That's why I watch them regularly. Yeah, I, I, I think it's, it, it's pretty good. Thousands of L's. I mean, maybe they, they had like L's like t three years ago. Like, I, I don't know. Like, I'm just saying like ever since I've been paying attention to them and like watching their stuff, I feel like it's been very positive and it's been good. Maybe I'm crazy, but that's what I think. IGN used to be a big meme in the past well I, who gives a fuck who gives a fuck about what happened then it's not that's not the past name one good video um i think they did a pretty good video about remnant i also liked the uh i i think that the video they did about tears of the kingdom was pretty good i liked the video they did 
Oh, fuck. Let me think. Uh, the video for uh, fucking uh, Lords of the Fallen I thought was pretty good. This one, obviously, right? I'm trying to think besides this. Uh, uh, the Honkai Star Rail one I think was pretty good, too. Uh, the Dwarf Fortress video I think was S tier. Yeah, all right. Oh, they're good? Name every good video. Yep, true. And look. Hey, 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 hey. If, if they release a video that sucks big fat donkey dicks, I'll watch that and I'll shit on it. But this one doesn't suck big fat donkey dicks. IGN's great daily video news. Yeah, I think they're pretty good. 